الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أحمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلله فلا هدي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم أما بعد يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن المجيد بسم الله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله الحق وتكات ولا تعمتون الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلقكم منها زوجها والبث منهما رجال كثيرا والنساء واتقوا الذي تساءلون به وارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديد يصلح لكم اعمالكم يغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوضا عظيما فإن الخير الحديث كتاب الله والخير الحدي هدى محمد وشحر الأمور متفاتها والكول مهدثة بدع والكول بداة ضلالة والكول دلالة في النار I seek refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from shaitan your curse and with the name of Allah the most gracious most merciful. Indeed, all praise belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise him, we seek his help and assistance, and we ask forgiveness for our sins. And moreover, we have a unique belief in his attributes, and for all our needs and necessity, we rely solely upon Allah. Moreover, we seek Allah's refuge and protection to avoid the temptations of our evil self nafsi amra and to be safe from the harms of our own wrongdoing to whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows the correct course of action no one can mislead him or her astray and to whomsoever he leaves to stray by his own inclination there is none to guide we bear witness we bear testimony that nothing and no one deserves worship nothing or no one deserves eulogy except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that he is alone and unique without plurality or association. And we further testify that Muhammad ibn Abdullah is the slave servant and messenger of Allah. And Allah Ta'ala has said by way of a reminder in the Quran, Bismillah, O you who believe, O you who profess faith. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he should be feared and die not except in a state of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Muslim. O mankind, verily we created you from a single soul and from that soul, and from that soul created its mate. And from the two of them spring forth countless men and women. Fear Allah and reverence the wombs that bore you. Verily he is over you ever watchful. And fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he should be feared and say a word directly to the point. He will improve your condition and forgive you your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has indeed achieved a mighty achievement indeed the best speech is the book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
And the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad. And the worst of matters are those innovated heresies by the people. And every innovated matter or every heresy is a bid'ah. And every bid'ah is astray. And every going astray ultimately leads to nowhere except the fire of hell. And again, I greet you with the universal greetings of peace in the Arabic language. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. And so as the hard season comes to completion and the Islamic year comes to a close, I say to you, as I said yesterday, on the Eid grounds, season's greeting. This is a season of joy and great spiritual significance. And while we continue in celebration of the Eid al-Kabir, the great Eid, let us all be reminded of the new year based upon our own Hijra calendar. The first of Muharram, 1437 AH. It is important for us to place greater significance on the days, weeks, and months of our Hijra calendar, and perhaps framing an Islamic conscious awareness that keeps us in touch with who we are as an Islamic movement as we struggle with cultural competency. And in the spirit of sacrifice accumulated in the rituals of Hajj, I wanted to kind of take some of the aspects of Hajj or the rituals of Hajj and kind of put them in a place where we can relate on an everyday level, on an everyday basis. And so all of the pilgrims in Hajj, the Adon, what is known as the Ihram. The clothing of Tawheed, every one of us is placed on a level playing field where no matter who you may think you are or who you may be, whether you be rich, whether you poor, whether you're of the haves or the have-nots, you're equal in the sight of Allah. And the only thing that can elevate the human being in his or her level or his or her level of God consciousness. As Allah Ta'ala has said in Surah Al-Hujurat, إِنَّ أَكْرَمَّكُمْ وَإِنَّ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ that the most noble of you in the sight of Allah Ta'ala is he who exhibits God consciousness. And so moving to the aspect of tawaf, where the pilgrims make circumambulation around the Kaaba as a ritual of Hajj that is rich in significance, let us circumambulate around a pivotal point of guidance and direction in our lives that will improve the quality of our lives on an everyday basis. And the Sa'i, running between the two hills of Safa and Marwa, and as I stated yesterday, and I repeat, Allah Ta'ala has said, a Safa wa Marwa, men Men Allah are among the signs and symbols of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In commemoration of our great grandmother Umhega as she ran between the two hills of Sefer and Marwa, 
in search of sustenance for her babe, relying and trusting and hoping upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we get water from the desert. And so hope, reliance, resilience, stick to itness, and realizing that Allah's promise is true. And so we need to be proactive, active participants. Our obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be like the corpse in the hands of the washer. And for many of you who have stood on the grounds of a funeral home and, 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 and participated in the washing of a brother or a sister, then you know what I mean. And our obedience should be as thus, in, as the, like the, the corpse in the hands of a wash. And whichever way you move that brother or sister, man, there's no resistance, man. And that's how our obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be on an everyday basis. And Rami, and Rami is an aspect of Hajj where the pilgrims or the Hujaj, they stone the Jemrats in commemoration of Ibrahim in fulfillment of the command of Allah Ta'ala it came up a point where the shaitan and the devil tried to prevent him from fulfilling that command. And so we stone the Jemrats much like what happened yesterday when the pilgrims were stampeded. And some of us look at it as a tragedy. And it is a tragedy. But I would rather not die in any other place than in the, the precincts or surrounding the rituals of Hajj. And for surely there's a great possibility that Allah Ta'ala will grant him or her Jannah as a result of traveling such far with the intention of fulfilling Allah Ta'ala's tenets and obligations. And so it's important that each and every day when you walk out of your house that you have your affairs in order because no one knows in what land that he will die. It's not promised for you when you walked out your house on your way to Jumma or Jumma that you was going to return. So it's important to have your affairs in order. And we would hope that all 717 of those hujaj, may Allah have mercy upon them and grant all of them Jannah, had their affairs in order. And so, out of fact, we must pray for Allah's mercy and compassion and forgiveness like every day is the day of Arafat. And the, of course, sacrifice. Let us continue to keep the spirit of sacrifice as we begin to enter into the month of Muharram and let us celebrate, not like the people who celebrate the new year or the God, or the pagan God Janus on January the 1st. But let us adhere to our calendar, the Hijra calendar that Allah Ta'ala has blessed us with, and follow it. And perhaps Allah Ta'ala will raise up our level of consciousness. And in the spirit of sacrifice, let us continue to sacrifice and perhaps Allah will help us to, or enable us to overcome our fears. Allah will help and enable us to overcome our fears. And that brings me to the topic of today's khutbah, overcoming your fear. O ye who worship Allah. The Oxford Dictionary has given us a definition of fear. And that definition reads as follows. Do I have it? Bismillah. 
second here. It says that fear is natural in human being as there is in the human brain, the limbic system, which is the centric basic emotional drive, such as fear, which is produced by stimulations of parts. Or there are countless creatures and conditions as well as objects but made by man that people fear in the world. And they include man himself, jinn, witches, wizards, Satan, death, animals, poverty, failure, disasters, misfortune, ill health, and even religion. And so that brings me to a, uh, this book. Uh, and the title of the book is called The Way of Muhammad. This book you probably couldn't find because it's out of print. But, you know, I salvaged as much as I could of the book because there's something in there that was very important dealing with fear that I wanted to share. And it reads as follows. Our Sheikh was asked, who is, who was his first master? And the Sheikh replied, a dog. He told that he had seen a dog desperately thirsty come upon a clear pool of water. And when the dog advanced, it saw itself clearly reflected in the pool and retreated in fear, taking the image to be that of another dog. Again and again, it, he advanced snarling only to retreat in terror at the ferocious image that menaced him until finally driven mad with thirst, the dog dived into the pool and the reflected image vanished. Again, the sheikh was asked, who was his master? And his response or his reply was a dog. And he told that he had seen a dog desperately thirsty come upon a clear pool of water. And when the dog advanced, it saw itself clearly reflected in the pool and retreated in fear, taking the image to be that of another dog. Again and again advanced, snarling only to retreat in terror of the ferocious image that menaced him until finally driven mad with thirst. The dog dived into the pool and the reflected image vanished. And so, why do I read that? Why is that so profound? And why did the Sheikh say that his first master was a dog? Perhaps there's a great amount of wisdom in the story. Everyone may, uh, you may get something different. But what I get, or my understanding, is that we need to face our fears, whatever they may be. That we need to take on our fears head on, whether they be imaginary fears, much like this dog had when he looked into the pool and seen a reflection of himself, not knowing that that was himself, until finally he was driven mad and had no other choice but to face his fear. And when he faced his fears, the imaginary fear disappeared. Or you who worship Allah. And so when we look at some real examples, some 21st century examples, we have to look at those of us who take risks. Because a lot of times when you take risks, there's circumstances behind the risk that you take. So whatever risk or whatever uh, uh, thing that you get into, you need to have knowledge of the situation because then that begins to lower the, 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 the fear of the risk because you have knowledge of that which you uh, 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 embark upon or that which you intend to get yourself into. And what do I mean by that? You know, I got a friend. And he, he's a friend that I know from the dunya, but he's, he, he has a criminal mind. And he said to me, he said, you know, Ali, man, I'm getting old. I said, yeah, we all are. <laughs> but he said that, you know, I walk around and he pulled out the penal code, which is a book of law. Mm -hmm. 
and he pulled out the CPLR, the Criminal Procedure Law and Rules, and he began to show me and demonstrate to me in an intelligent manner why he doesn't do certain things or why he doesn't uh, 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 commit certain crimes. And so he said, and the reason why I don't do such and such, because that carries thus and so. And so I stay within the parameters of these things here, because if I go outside of that, then I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm out of my lane, so to speak. And so although a criminal, and thinking as a criminal, there was a degree of intelligence behind the consequences of his behavior. So that lessens the fear. If you know if you go in a store and you shoplift, it's different from committing 125.25, which is homicide. The penalties are different, and the chances of you getting life in prison for shoplifting is slim to none. So I said, wow, that's interesting. You know, and then I looked at the example of the woman uh Kim Davis, just the other day. Kim Davis out of Kentucky, she stood on the principles of her religion and she became a conscientious objector. She consciously objected to the fact that she didn't, she said, I'm not signing a marriage certificate because my religious beliefs go against same-sex marriage. And she took that position based on the notion of what she understood her religious scripture as, which, which, which I believe was the Bible. And she said, I refuse to sign any marriage certificate for same-sex marriage. So she took a stand. She took a stand based on knowledge. She didn't have fear of what the consequences would be because the reality, if she was just to cite U.S. versus Muhammad Ali, she might have just, uh, uh, they would probably just let her go. Because when we look back at the precedent that Ali uh, 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 took, Back in the 60s when the Supreme Court ruled in his favor as a conscious objector based on religious reasons. He didn't have any fear. He didn't have any fear. And so he stood up for what he believed in much like what uh, uh, Miss Kim Davis did. And by the grace and mercy of Allah, she was sprung from prison. But whatever be the outcome of that case as it goes on. Very interesting something that we should follow. I don't think that if the Pope was in town, in which he is, that they would have asked him to sign uh, 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 somebody's uh, uh, marriage certificate because it would set a precedent for the world. If the Pope were to walk in and sign a, a marriage certificate based on same-sex marriage, that would, that, would, that would make a big precedent, man. It'll be a political statement as well as a religious statement. But the point that I'm making is that there was no fear. She had no fear of what the consequences were because she believed what she believed to be right. She believed what she believed to be true. And so she trusted and she relied upon Allah Ta'ala that I can do this because I'm doing something that's correct. And so I have no fear. And so there's a hadith uh, that I pulled up uh, while I was on the internet, uh, you know, trying to put together this subject matter. And y'all excuse me, because I'm all over the place. I was running late. <clears throat> but the hadith uh, pretty much was stating that the Prophet Sallallahu you know, he explained, he said, Abu Sayyid al Kujri reported that the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, Let not one of you belittle himself. They said, O Messenger of Allah, how does one belittle himself? And the Prophet said, He finds a matter regarding Allah about which he should speak up, but he does not. 
and the lawly exalted will say to him on the day of resurrection, what prevented you from speaking up about such a matter? He will say it was out of fear of the people. And Allah will say, rather, it is I who deserve to be feared. And so that, that's, that's uh, profound. You know, uh, in order to be a champion in this country, then you got to face your fears, whatever your fears may be. If you want to be a champion in America, as the Imam Talib always says, if you want to get on the Wheaties box, like Muhammad Ali did, then you have to face your fears. If you want to be a champion, you got to speak up for what you believe is right. And all of us will be on the Wheaties box. We'll all be champions in the cause of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, because we decided to speak out and we had courage and we knew that Allah ta'ala would support us. And so we all champions at the end of the day. Everybody in the masjid, women, men, children, we'll see our pictures all on the Wheaties box. And so just like in, in the case of Kim Davis, man, you know, all she got to do is cite the U.S. versus Muhammad Ali. And I believe that the case would be closed. If, if the United States Supreme Court is looking at the, the, the intricacies of, that, of, of the situation. You see, because we, we live in a, in a society where they pushing the idea of cultural competency means that you got to respect everybody's thing, right? If I don't feel that uh, 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 this or that is right, then I don't have to accept it. If I feel that I don't want to sign a marriage certificate based on my religious belief, then I don't have to. In Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will support me. And so I wanted to kind of uh, mention some of the other words that Allah Ta'ala mentions in the Quran about fear. Most of, uh, commonly, you know, we, we, we know the word taqwa. We hear the word taqwa, you know, all of the time, you know. And alhamdulillah, taqwa is a unique word and it does translate as fear. But there are other words in the Quran that Allah Ta'ala uses as fear. And one of those words I wanted to mention is the word kauf. Right, the word kauf. And kauf is a perceived danger and a fear of something that is physical. Kauf is the type of fear that you feel if you begin to be chased by a dog. But as for him, as Allah Ta'ala says, as for him who feared kauf, standing before his Lord and restrained himself from impure and evil desires. And then Allah Ta'ala uses the word kashiya or kashiya. Kashiya is the fear as a result of knowledge and leads to action. It is when you know the greatness and magnitude of what you fear and as a result have an awe and reverence of it. Allah Ta'ala tells the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you can only warn him who follows the reminder and fears kashiya, the most merciful unseen and then we go to the word kushu and kushu is the fear that is manifested not only in your heart but it is shown on your face and limbs kushu literally means to bend down and to become still kushu is used for the submissiveness of the heart which is reflected upon the limbs as Allah Ta'ala says Called the Aflah al Mu'minun, successful indeed are the believers, El Ladi Humfi Salati Kashi'un, those who offer their salah prayers with all humbleness and submissiveness. And this is the kind of fear that we should have in salah. This fear should be present on our faces and not just in our hearts. And if the heart has kushu, the body will have kushu. So kushu is not just a state of the heart. It is a state of the heart which is visible on a person's actions in their posture and in their movements. And taqwa is a shield. 
you know, and taqwa is a shield, man, where we protect our own selves, you know, from our own wrongdoings. And for those of us who uh, a taqwa penetrates your heart, you begin to place a body armor over your heart, over your body, over your limbs that protect you from doing wrong. The more Allah Ta'ala says, Talk Allah. Ya you have Ladina Amanu, talk Allah. Wa kulu kaulin sadeed. Ya you have Ladina Amanu, talk Allah. Hakka to Kati. Wa la tatmutuna ila wa antu muslimun. Ya you have Ladina, talk Allah, etc., etc. And so fear Allah Ta'ala. Have reverence for Allah Ta'ala. Because you realize, man, that in the end, the only thing that's going to benefit you is God consciousness. The only thing that makes us better than the next man or woman is how true we are in word and deed. How true we are to that which we say we believe in. And so I wanted to uh, kind of go over, I had uh, some other examples that I wanted to share you know because there's a lot of fears man that we are confronted with the fear of poverty Allah Ta'ala says the shaitan the shaitan threatens us with poverty and we live in a society that play a serious Machiavellian game where they control people and enslave people by fear they put imagery out there for you they parade imagery before the networks on television and put a storyline behind it and begin to tr control you and enslave you with fear. Where you feel that you can't do anything, that you can't uh, arise to the occasion. Allah Ta'ala has promised you richness, but because of the fear that's been placed in society through imagery and otherwise, it's kind of stunted our growth from moving forward and obtaining the objective of, of, of economics. A lot of us think that we can't do no better. And so we satisfied with where we are. Some of us fear that we're going to lose our husband or we're going to lose our wives. Why? If you're doing the right thing to your wife and your husband, then you shouldn't be worried about your wife cheating on you. You shouldn't be worried about your husband looking other places if you're doing the right thing in your house. And so fear, man, is a very important topic. And I think that as, you know, the, the Sheikh had illustrated in the example of the dog being the master, that we must begin to dive into the fear. Whatever fears there may be, invisible or otherwise, we have to confront them. We have to stand up. We have to speak out for truth and justice and equality. Right? And we have to rise to the occasion because Allah Ta'ala has promised us a great deed of a lot of things. So we have to not only believe in Allah, we have to believe Allah. It's one thing to say a shadow in lad that I believe in Allah, but do you believe Allah? Do you believe that Allah's word is bond? Sadaq Allah. Do you believe that Allah's word is true? That when Allah promises you this or that or the other, that Allah Ta'ala will certainly cash in on his promise. As long as we, we understand man, who we need to be fearing. So we got to rise up to the occasion and we have to speak out you know it's, it's funny the other day uh everybody been pushing me to watch this movie empire right so oh, i mean you got to watch empire you ain't see the first uh, episode back you know when it first came out blah, blah, blah. you know so i said okay i'm gonna turn it on when is it starting the other i think it was two wednesday one of the days this week it started back up again and so when i when i seen the first uh that episode it turned me off because some of the stuff that they was promoting in there, particularly for African-American young men, I said, that's devastating, man. That's almost as work, worse as the movies that they used to have in the 70s. How they used to perpetuate us as nothing but drug dealers, Superfly and Mr. T 
and all those other movies. You know, it's the same thing, man. It's just fast forwarded to the 21st century empire. So everybody's supposed to be excited because this is how black people live their lives. You see? And they're perpetuating their agenda. That's not our agenda. You know? And I hate to rain on people's parade for those of you who enjoy uh, watching Empire. You know? But you can't just watch it. You got to examine it. Examine what's happening in, 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 in stories like that. Look at the imagery that's being paraded before your children. Because I'm sure if you're sitting there watching it, your children is probably sitting there watching it with you. Just like the imam said the other day, uh, the, uh, the kids said, uh, well, Dad, why are you pushing me about the salat? We don't do this at home. Kids is innocent. You see, and you destroy and warp their minds by parading certain imagery before them. And, it, and it, all it does, it, it continues to the fear that we already have. It just perpetuates, man, more fear. Kid, and, and, and the children nowadays, all you see, man, on the television is somebody getting shot. The guy jumped, the police pulled the guy over, right, because he had the tail light was missing or something. And the guy jumped out and ran, and the police shot him down like a dog. That's the images that we see. I've been seeing it since I was a kid in the 70s, man. Clifford Glover. I can go, I remember, and it's so you that I remember the names, man. Clifford Glover. That name is just, in my mind, Clifford Glover. Back in the 70s, post, fast forward to the 21st century, they shot that guy down. Tail light missing, police pull him over, random check, just shot him down like a dog. So those images, you know, that, that instills fear. Because you think that when the police pull you out, whether you're right or wrong, that they, they might just kill you. So you just take off. You say, you know what, I ain't got no drugs on me, but I'm just going, I'm going to send them on a high-speed chase. I'd rather get in front of the, the mall where a lot of people could see what's happening for him to, to pull me over in a place where there's no witnesses. You know? And so that's the reality, man, of the time that we're living in. They're going to continue to plant fear in you. You see, and the same thing with the terrorist thing that's going on now. It's all about planting fear. Because if I plant fear, I can control you, and then I can control popular opinion. And then when it comes to legislation, people will say, yeah, we're going to vote for that. And as I tell you, send all the Muslims, put them all in the concentration camp like we did the Japanese. Put them all in the concentration camp. Muslims should never be the president of the United States. You see, and, and, and this is the image. We, 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 we know, watch the news. You see what Carson said? And he believed that how many other people that didn't say it believe it? At least he let us know what he felt. But how many other people feel that way? Based upon ignorance. So we got a job to do, man. And part of the job is to stand up, be proactive, man, and, 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 and demonstrate, man, what Islam is in this country. Demonstrate what Islam is because we don't have fear of being deported. It's like they said yesterday, where are they going to send us to? To jail, and after you get out of jail, you're coming back to Harlem, you're going back to the Bronx, you're going back to North Carolina. So there, what's the fear? Speak truth to power. What can happen to you? Either you're going to be victorious and, 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 and moving the movement forward, or, or you're going to kill them in pursuit of it. So you're in a win-win situation. So we got to step up, step forward. We need people to, uh, Juma's good, alhamdulillah, in fulfillment of the command of Allah. But we need more. We need youth, you know? We need to teach the youth, you know, educate the youth, teach them about fear and the tactics and Cointel Pro, et cetera, et cetera. You know, so we don't have no fear. We, where are they going to send us, man? We don't have the fear of deportation. That's other people's fears. People that's trying to buy into the American nightmare. You see? And so let us trust in Allah Ta'ala. And let us begin to, uh, you know, think about being more active, being more proactive, you know, getting out, be, getting involved in the movement, man. Islam is a movement. You see, Islam was born out of a movement. 
Much like the early movements in this country, man, the civil rights movement, the human rights movement, you see? And that's how we got to look at Islam as a movement. And you want to be a part of a movement because a movement ain't about no individual. It's about collective work and responsibility. A movement ain't about no individual. You see? We need to think about the collective because in order to get things done, it needs to be collective work and responsibility. Everybody needs to be proactive. The Muslim, linguistically, the word, uh, it's mufail, an active participle, man. To be a Muslim means to be active. Active in worship and active in political and economic stability for our community. But we behind the eight ball. Why? Because we've been tricked into believing that we ain't going to be nobody. And we can't uh, 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 climb the economic ladder based upon our circumstances. And that's a lie. Because all you got to do is apply yourself to knowledge, apply yourself to the Quran and the Sunnah, and richness, man. You know, just like they say, there you was looking for richness, and richness was looking for you. But you didn't know how to get it because they got a trick. They're putting us in the trick bag. You know? Hitler. I mean, when you look at uh, 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 this country and look at uh, uh, some of the great leaders, man, and how they, 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 they kind of govern with fear, you know? You don't want to talk because you fear that you're going to be put into the oven. You see, you, if you was Jewish, then, you know, uh, 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 you, you scared to do anything because well, you think Hitler and his crew, the Nazis and them, going to grab you up and your family and throw you into an oven, which they was doing. It's a fact. They was putting people in the oven. In the transatlantic slave trade, they brought the slaves over. They raped your woman right in front of you. Rape your wife, your daughter right in front of you. Take them away from you as captive right in front of your eyes, man. And it's still fear in you. This is what happens to you people, man, when you don't go along with the program. And the same thing that's happening today. You see? Muslims like this, Muslims changing their name from Muhammad to Mark. You know? Yeah. You see? And people died to wear kufis and beards, man. You know, when you look at the history of the decision in this country, man, how, how from the nation of Islam all the way to the day, man, brothers lost their lives just to wear beards and kufis, you know, and jellabias and all the rest of that stuff. But we take, every, we take that stuff for granted, you know. So, you know, may Allah Ta'ala instill within us, man, the, 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 the wherewithal to be strong, you know, and not to be cowards and to stand up for that which we believe in and speak truth to power, man, and change your circumstances and condition. Be proactive participants in the movement that we're trying to take to the next level. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. and so in clothing. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue to guide us, to instill us within us an ability that's an inherent ability to do and fight, you know, for his cause. And like I mentioned earlier, that our obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be like the corpse in the hands of the washer. And whichever way the people move you, that's the direction that you move in. And so whatever direction the movement is taking, then we need to tag along, you know, as long as, you know, the leadership is doing uh, 
that which is according to the Quran and Sunnah, then by all means that we should follow. You know, because you know, a lot of times, like the brother mentioned yesterday, you know, we got to be careful, man. You know, and it take in order to differentiate, you need knowledge. The, the, the words ain't gonna jump out the book into your head. You know, you have to read. You got to have a teacher. You got to have an instructor, whether it be a sheikh, whether it be your father, whether it be your mother. You you need an instructor. You know, a lot of times you can't get everything out of a book without having an instructor. So it's very important, man. And some people in their disciplines, they teach you that you need a teacher. You know, you need a teacher that can ask pertinent questions. You need a teacher that's living in, 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 in this time. Some money, uh, uh, what we call them, uh, uh, theoreticians, man, that can answer the questions that uh, 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 need to be answered in the time we're living in today. Because if we look at the examples that's being paraded in the networks, man, then a lot of people, and the reason why a lot of people have the xenophobia is because they don't understand. They're ignorant. You know? I remember when I was in Harlem Hospital working as a volunteer chaplain, and this, this, this Christian lady, she began to, Imam Lukman was teaching the class, and so, we, you know, we were sitting there and we was conversing, and, and, and the Christian lady said, you know, I've never sat, this is the closest I've ever been to a Muslim. She said, and I didn't even realize that you guys believe what you believe. It, it blew my mind, because this girl was about 35 or 40 years old, never had interaction with Muslims. Lived in Harlem, and the closest that she ever got to a Muslim was in, in, the, uh, in, in the class that we had. I said, wow, imagine how many other people is like that around the world. You know, and when they say, you know, when they parade the imagery before you and they see uh, uh, some, uh, a person's face and Muslims cutting people's heads off and all this other kind of stuff, that's what they think about Islam. You know, so it's important, man, that we step up, man. We need to start correcting a lot of things. But you can't correct anything if you don't know nothing. You know, so you got to apply yourself to knowledge, man. You got to sit in the class. You got to go to the university. You got to apply yourself to the book of law. You got to make dua and ask Allah, a rabbi zitni ilm, to increase you in knowledge, in action, in understanding. You see, because a lot of stuff we read, we don't have no understanding of. You know, so again, we be in the trick bag again, you know, and then we look in other to other than ourselves and who we are for leadership, because sometimes and a, and, and a part of the problem is we don't know who we are. You see, you begin you begin to doubt yourself and who you are and what your capabilities are as a result, man, of the games, man, that's being played, the Machiavellian trick bag that they got us in, man. It's a serious thing, man, you know. And so, you know, again, may Allah Ta'ala continue to bless us and guide us and keep us on the straight path. ربنا تيني في الدنيا حسنا وفي الآخرة حسنا وقينا أذبنا ربنا هب لنا من أسواجنا وضرياتنا قرة عين وجعلنا للمتقين إمام ربنا أتيني في الدنيا حسنا وفي الآخرة حسنا وقيب أذبنا ربنا لا تأخذنا إن نصينا وأقطعنا وربنا ولا تعمل علينا إسرا كما هموت أول الذين من قبلنا. آمين. وعقل كامل